Hello everybody. Um, today in this video we're going to continue talking about the plotting in MATLAB. Um, last time we saw how we can plot more than one uh, graph on the same figure uh, and we saw how to do the formatting and we saw the difference between the formatting for the data series uh, which includes the line color, the line width, the um, marker size, the marker type and color um, and we also talked about the formatting that's related to the plot itself or the graph, uh, which includes the access titles, the grid lines, the uh, legend, and the uh, title of the graph, and, and other stuff. Um, today we're going to talk about the uh, plotting in on um, semi-log or log-log scale, which is one very important kind of uh, plotting that we use a lot in engineering applications. Um, so the, the the difference between doing this uh, semi-log or log-log plot uh, in MATLAB uh, from the normal plotting on the linear plots is just uh, the, 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 the order that we are going to write in the beginning. Otherwise, everything is going to be the same, changing the formatting and the, the way we do the formatting is, is exactly the same. Um, so let's first say we have a series, um, we call it L which is say 1 to um, 100 <coughs> with this uh, with an increment of 10 let's say uh, or make it from 0 uh, by the way there are two ways you can do this first you can say that you want to start from 0 and end uh, at 100 with 10 uh, increment of 10 so you, that's what you do and there is one other thing that it's called length space which is actually, I sometimes use it more than um, the, the 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 this this way. Um, and at the linear space, you you say you want to start with zero, and you're gonna end with hundred, and you want to have eleven data points, and it's gonna give you the same thing. And and the the, the good thing about linear space is that you specify the starting and the ending point and the number of points you have in between you don't need to specify what is the step sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to do this um, so anyways you have both ways you can do um, do the data series so L and M are, are the same thing now and let's say I have a series that's called J it is the exponential of let's say uh, M power 0.25 you know uh, we have to make the elemental power so it says well I need something more um, let's make it 2.5 oh that's too much um, 1.5 oh, again too much um, let's make it 0.8 again uh, we'll make it 0.7 I'm just trying any anything that will be kind of reasonable. So so let's make it 0.55. So you have here everything. Um, here is uh, raised to the power of five. So you have 0 0.0003. So this is actually is gonna be th uh, 300 um, or 30. It's gonna be 30. Uh, and the same till till the end here. So I have here the, the numbers because you see here this is a very very small number. It's not zero by the way, but it's very very small compared to this. So so that it's it's not showing the power. So I'm I'm doing this just to show you that it's important to know when to use the um, log log scale or semi log scale and to use the normal scale. So let's say I'm gonna plot um, L. Uh, against uh, or it's going to be the same but m against j uh, and this is what you're going to see now um, let, let, let me put it in uh, in points so you can see the points easily so you're going to make them circle um, no line i'll make it uh, red and to make it easy to see i'll make the line width um, to be two uh. <clears throat> so so here it is now so you see from this plot you'll see that from from value of 60 uh, you can see the, the the difference in the values but because of these values are very small you cannot see actually what are these values so for, for from uh, this scale the first one two three four almost five data points are almost the same and this is not what we see here 
Um, and this is because you're expanding the scale too much so that this uh, part in the beginning is very, very squeezed that all these data points will be almost zero. Um, and to fix this, you use the semi-log. And, and what we, we need to do is to have this on a normal linear scale and to have the y-axis on a logarithmic scale. And to do this, you would simply, and instead of using plot, you make semi-log. But you have to specify which axis would be the log scale. So you have to say semi-log y. And by doing this, you would see that it is getting way better than before. You can see the difference now that you have. You can easily tell that this is zero. This is um, something between ten. Uh, let, let's put grid lines. Um, it's it's or oh, it's um, twenty thirty. It's thirty something, which is what we said before. And you can easily tell the value of each one of them. Um, so this is the uh, the logarithmic scale uh, for y. Um, let's let's say you have an uh, uh, let's say you have the the x, which is the 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 log scale, which is gonna be weird now. But now you have x as the log scale, and y is let's put the grid lines. Um, so x is on the log scale and y is the linear scale. So you can you can easily uh, switch between two, um, and you see everything between the brackets is exactly the same. And you can put more than one plot; it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want an, if you want to plot both on log scales, you just type log log, and in this case, let's put the grid lines. And in this case, you have all of them. Uh, the X and the Y both are on log scale. So it's pretty simple and straightforward um, and you can easily uh, use it. It's, it's not different from what we said before. Um, to give uh, an example about this, I have these data series of the what we call the ionization potential. For those who do not know what is the ionization potential, these are the values. Uh, it is the energy that's required to kick one electron out of um, an, an atom. And, and as you see here, this is the electron number. So we have 19 electrons. It's for potassium. Um, and this is the energy that you need to kick the first electron out. And then you are breaking an energy level. That's why the energy is is way, it's ten almost 10 times more. And then it gets in, in, in this region, it's increasing, increasing. And then suddenly it gets um, here uh, three times more. Uh, and this is because you are breaking one more energy level and so on. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how the ionization potential changes with the number of electrons. So you can tell or, or just need to plot them. And what I'm going to plot on the x-axis is the electron number and what I have on the y-axis is ionization potential. Um, <clears throat> and again, I'll make them circle and red. Um, and we'll put grid lines. I can put X label um, the electron number and Y label as the ionization potential. Um, this is in kilojoule per gram, I think. Uh, I think it was it was like this or per mole. I'm I'm not sure. <coughs> anyway, so I have now the plot, and this is the same problem arises here. You see all these data points, or, or, or the first eight, uh, eight electrons have almost the same energy from this plot, or nine, nine, uh, nine points. And then you see this jump, and then you see the, this jump. But the way we need to plot it is using the semi-log y. And you see everything is going to be the same. I just changed the plot into semi-log y. And here you can easily tell that this is one electron in a separate energy level. This is one energy level. This is one energy level. And this is the last energy level. So you know that this is the first, second, third, and this is the fourth energy level. So it makes a very, very big difference between the log scale and the linear scale. So it's, it's important to keep in mind that this is one uh, nice option that you have. It's very simple. Uh, no more details, just changing from plot to semi-log x, semi-log y, or log log. Um, that's all for today, and see you next video. Goodbye.